Hey, and welcome to another Illumilite Explains. Today we're talking about tech specs. What are tech specs? Well, they're the properties that you need to know about the material that you're about to use or that you're about to purchase. Maybe you're making a decision. This is important info, y'all. You gotta know this stuff. So we're gonna walk through it. I'm gonna talk you through the properties at a very high level so that you know what you're doing. I'm gonna start with a computer screen on the TV because I think it's gonna be easier for all of us. All right, so how to get to a tech spec? Well, go to the website and then type in whatever product that you're looking to learn more about. Or you can navigate through the actual products tab and all that type of stuff. I hope you know how to use a website by now. So we're just gonna skip this and I'm gonna go to our first example and that's Amazing Clearcast. On the product page, you see the photo, you see a beautiful description that the team wrote. And then all the way down here, this big gray box. Oh, look at that, technical specifications. Now we got some obvious ones here, so forgive me for the brevity around those, but I wanna stop and talk about some of the more complex ones. So, product, amazing clear cast. Color, clear. I hope you're with me so far. Mix ratio, one to one by volume. You've probably heard of that before, but pay attention to this one when it comes to other products. Foams and other things might be two to one or 10 to one. So this is an important one, even though it feels kind of basic right now. All right, pot life. You might've heard this called open time or work time. We're talking about the same thing here. It's how much time you have to work with the material before things are gonna start happening and you need to be done using it, basically. The mold time's pretty self-explanatory too. This one, although pay attention to that 100 grams. That means in a mass that's 100 grams worth, this is how long it's gonna take. If you have more mass than 100 grams, it's probably gonna be shorter, and if you have less mass, it might be longer. So demold time is on a 100 gram mass. Now mix viscosity, CPS, what's CPS? Well, that's centipoise, and that's actually how we measure viscosity. A higher centipoise number, like the thousands, is more like honey or thick syrup and molasses, and a lower number, closer to 10, 100, something like that, is more water-like. So when we look at Amazing Clearcast at 2,600, it's gonna be about the consistency of warm honey. You'll see this change as things go on with silicones and stuff like that, but for now, you get it. Centipoise is how you say it. All right, the next one is specific gravity. This one's actually pretty unique and interesting and important to pay attention to depending on your project. The specific gravity is usually around one or two. It's a, a lower number. And one is actually what the density of water is. This is actually a measure of density. So if your number of your material is less than one, that material is gonna float because it's less dense than water. And if it's greater than one, then it's gonna sink because it's more dense with water. So looking at this, Amazing Clearcast is just a little bit denser than water, so technically it's gonna sink. If you're trying to do inclusions and suspending things, this is an important number to pay attention to. All right, shore hardness. That's a measure of hardness. <laughs> I had to kind of walk you through the door on that one. There are different scales of shore hardness. There's the double lot scale, there's the A scale, there's the D scale, the A's for silicone, the D's for resins. You can look that up in a different video and maybe we should actually go over that in a different video. But for now, just recognize that it's actually how hard the material is that you're working with. In this case, ADD is actually a pretty stiff resin on the D scale. I do have to clarify that this is the hardness measure once it's cured. It's liquid beforehand, and then it cures hard. Somebody was gonna ask, I just needed to clarify. All right, shrinkage. Well, shrinkage is exactly what it sounds like. When you pour your material and it cures, some of that material might actually shrink away a little bit. It might actually lose some of its volume considering it's gonna actually heat up and it's gonna go through a chemical process. How much is it? Well, if you look, 0.003 inches per inch. So that's barely any shrinkage in this case. But in other products, that number is a little bit higher. You'll see that in Clear Slow and some of the other urethane resins. So you just have to accommodate that. Tensile strength is how much tension this thing can be put under before it actually breaks. This test, the ASTM, is one that you can look up and actually see the specifics on how we test this. But just understand, we're kind of pulling things apart in this moment. How much tension can it be under before it catastrophically fails? Now for elongation, it's really just how much you can actually elongate, just think of stretch a little bit, the material. That's why you see one to 3% here on Amazing Clearcast, because it's a rigid, hard resin. When we go over to the silicones, you're gonna see elongation in the hundreds of percentages because that's what that stuff's made for. Now heat resistance and heat deflection temperature I actually have a whole video about the difference between those two things and I go into full detail. So I'm gonna make you go watch that video over there but I'll give you a preview right now that basically says heat resistance is a number that's really, really high where people talk about catastrophic failure and heat deflection temperature is when your material starts to soften but isn't permanently damaged. Now this last one on Amazing Clearcast is my favorite. FDA compliant, yes.
Now it's more complicated than that, of course. This is FDA compliant once it's been fully cured and then washed with soap and dishwater. And FDA compliance is different than FDA approved and there's a bunch of stuff that goes into that. But just so you know that once you use this material and you use it properly and take care of it appropriately, it is food safe, it's FDA compliant. All right, you get it, right? You know what we're doing. You've heard some of these terms before, but we're ripping through them because I want to make sure that you know what you're doing. So let's jump onto another product and do the same thing. Onto Amazing Mold Maker. This is our first silicone that we're seeing down here. So we're gonna see some different information. So looking through this tech spec, here's what I see that I think we should talk about. Number one is that shore hardness. Look, it's 20A. So remember, that's a different scale. The other thing are these die B and die T tear strength numbers. Those are two different tests that you can actually look up. The, the T is actually kind of peeling a pre-cut piece of silicone, and die B is actually pulling apart a piece of pre-cut silicone. They're just gonna tell you how durable and stretchy and how rough it's gonna be for you while you're trying to demold the piece. If you have a little cut in your mold, let's say, some silicones with a low tear strength are gonna immediately just rip apart and you're not gonna be able to use them anymore. But ones with a very high tear strength, you're really gonna be able to pull that thing and get your part out. Our high strength series has a very high tear strength. I hope that was obvious because it's called high strength. The other two I wanna talk about are elongation and temperature resistance. The elongation, remember how I told you it was gonna be in the hundreds? Look at this, 600%. A little bit more than the one, or one to three, I think it was for Amazing Clearcast. Now, temperature resistance, this is one of my favorite parts of silicone. The range is so wide. Look at this, negative 67 degrees, and then 395. Oh, silicone is so cool. All right, let's pop over to clear slow. This is a clear urethane, so it's a little bit different than the Amazing Clearcast Epoxy that we have. See the name, product, mix ratio, pot life, demold time, mix viscosity, specific gravity, shore hardness, shrinkage. If you'll notice, 0.005 is a little bit more than three. That actually matters if you're doing a bigger pour of clear slow. The tensile strength, the elongation, and the temperature resistance. Look at this. We're on product number three right now. This is a urethane. It might be a scary product for some of you, but you actually know all of this already. We just went over this. The only attribute I really wanna call out specifically on this one is actually the mix viscosity. The mix viscosity is 400 compared to Amazing Clearcast 2,600. So this, when you mix it up, it's gonna feel water-like in comparison. Remember, on the specific, not the specific gravity, the mix viscosity. The lower the number of mix viscosity, the more water it is. The higher the number it is, the more like laffy taffy, you know, at like the, on the coast. Is that, where do they, isn't that on the east coast, right? with the, in this, the, this machine, you know? My, I'm so scared I'm gonna get caught in one of those. It's an irrational fear, but it's a fear. All right, it's time for a new product that a lot of you have not seen, and that is this Flex Foam. I like this, web, this TV with the website, I can pull this up. So that looks like a, a, a brick. It's actually a foam brick. You can see it's scrunchy there. So we're gonna have different actual product attributes than we do some of the harder resins. Let's take a look. We see a lot of the same stuff here. We see the product, the color, the mix ratio, all that type of stuff. But we do notice the shore hardness side of this says three to eight pounds density. Well, that's because we're not necessarily talking about the shore hardness on that hardness scale. We're talking about foam here. So it's gonna have a certain amount of squish to it. It's gonna have a certain density. That's how we like to think about foams, is the density measure. All right, now shrinkage we actually used as a good placeholder and completely misled you there because it's not shrinkage, it's actually expansion. So this stuff expands three to five times. So a three to five times expansion means if I've got one ounce of material, I'm gonna end up with three ounces or five ounces of foam in that same cup I mixed. I did this when I did this really cool massive cube that if you haven't seen that video somewhere, maybe we can throw you a quick highlight of some of that stuff rising to the surface. This is really cool material. One of my favorites that we have, and I don't think it gets enough love. The last one, the Flex Modulus is, I mean, you could imagine it's actually a measure of its flexibility and kind of its, how do I even describe this? I don't know how to describe this one. Sorry, hold on. Look, flex modulus is basically how much this stuff is going to actually flex for you and kind of the ranges of it. If you have a flex foam like this, as we've got aptly named for you, it's gonna be pretty flexible. It's gonna be seat cushiony soft. If you have a harder foam, that flexibility is not gonna be there. It's still foam, it still has a density, it still has all those attributes, but it's not flexible. 
Now you've seen foams, but have you seen the rubbers that we have? This stuff's actually really, really cool. So this is Flex 70. If you haven't seen this before, I'll pull this image up. It's actually, that's, so that's bending and it snaps back to a, its regular shape. It's really cool, it's urethane rubber. All right, here we go. Let's look at these tech specs. Product, Flex 70, color, translucent yellow, mix ratio, one to one by weight, pot life, four minutes. It's really hard to use. I've tried to mix this up. It's really tense. Everybody in the shop has to be quiet. It's like dad turning on the music in the car because it's raining and he's got to focus. I mean, look at this. I'll just keep going. You got mixed viscosity, demold time, specific gravity, short hardness, shrinkage, tensile strength, and the elongation. Y'all, you're pros at this by now. You know all these numbers. You know what all this means. Now, to make sure you're the absolute expert of experts here when it comes to looking at a tech spec and understanding it, we'll do the last thing, which is an opaque urethane resin like our amazing casting resin. You can get this at Michael's. You can get this at your local hobby store even. But it still has attributes that we should know about. We know the product. We know the color. We know the pot life. We know the demold time, the mix viscosity, but I want to talk about the mix viscosity. This is really, really low. This is 90, so it's basically like mixing water. This makes it a really great product if you're trying to fill a really complex mold where you want everything to flow in there appropriately. It mixes super quick, and the open time gives you well, not much time to do it. So having water, water-thin material is gonna help with air release, it's gonna help with getting things into the pressure pod and then refilling it. It's a really good material. But pay attention to that mix viscosity, it's gonna affect the way you use this material. The only other thing to pay attention to on the Amazing Casting Resin is that elongation. It's a little bit more here, it's 10%. So that's something where the material itself is gonna give you more flex than some of the other urethanes that we have. And then a heat deflection temperature of 185. So, I mean, all things considered, this is really cool material. And it's very different than the Clear Slow, which is also a urethane resin that we talked about earlier. Now you think, you know, okay, I don't know how to navigate this stuff. Well, you do though. You know the difference between all these terms. You know the difference between all these materials. Now you can navigate your way through what's best for your project, head to the website, type in, you type in the material you already know, or go through the actual search tab and start comparing these things. I do talk to you about the difference between silicones and how to choose one of those, but sometimes it's just fun to explore on your own. So hit the website and check it out for yourself. Now, if you want more information, right next to the tech specs are technical data sheets and safety data sheets. In those, there's a lot of words that you might not understand. I know I didn't understand all of them when I first started reading these things, so it might feel more intimidating. That's why we've put these tech specs over here to the side so you can get the information you need easier and well, sooner, to be honest with you. Now, before you go, if you like this video, please do me a favor and actually like this video. That helps me and everybody else here know that we're doing a good job. If you're not subscribed to this channel, you should be subscribed to this channel. That's not just for me, that's for you. We do a bunch of educational content, fun projects, things that you can check out, get inspired by, I don't know, and maybe learn alongside me. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.